So I wanted to talk about adaptationism in this video. Um, in the 70s, uh, Lewontin and uh, Stephen Jay Gould wrote a paper uh, called The Spandrels of San Marcos and the Panglossian Paradigm. Uh, Pangloss is a character um, or caricature um, by Voltaire of Leibniz. And um, Leibniz famously said that uh, this world is the most perfect world uh, because why would God create any other um, less than perfect world? Um, so the basic idea is that everything exists for a reason, for a good reason. Um, and uh, Gold and Lewontin's paper was a critique of an extreme version of adaptationism. What is adaptationism? Well, the idea is that uh, organisms evolve by natural selection to f fit into a certain niche in a pre-existing environment. Um, the natural selector um, so to speak, is the environment. It's out there. There are certain um, spaces or wedges that organisms can fit into and thereby uh, reach the highest fitness. Um, and I think in general this is a, this is a great uh, heuristic or a method for research. Um, and as a method, um, it allows us to look at organisms as if they were engineered by a natural selector, i.e. the in independently existing environment, um, and we can in a sense reverse engineer um, any number of the characteristics of an organism, whether it's a behavioral, instinctual um, type of thing, or an actual physiological uh, or morphological characteristic. Um, we can ask, why is this particular uh, trait um, in evidence here in this organism. Now, um, Lewontin and Gold weren't necessarily saying that we should never use this type of reasoning to understand um, evolution, but they were pointing out that when taken to extremes, this can in effect be, uh, well, uh, Panglossian in the sense that we assume that every feature of an organism has to have a reason for being. Um, that it has to have provided the organism of which it is a constituent part um, some kind of an advantage. It must have increased its fitness. Um, and I think the problem here is more with these metaphors. Um, and when we take the metaphors literally, they mislead us. Fitness, for example, implies the organism... Well, it implies two things. The organism is somehow more fit, like we say physically fit, you know, you're stronger, you're quicker, um, and so it survives, it reproduces itself better. Uh, but fitness could also um, be seen in terms of uh, fitting as a wedge into an open space or a puzzle piece into, you know, the surrounding um, uh, puzzle pieces. So it's, 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 it's somewhat misleading. Uh, Luantin likes to emphasize the fact that organism and environment always go together. You can certainly distinguish between the two. After all, organisms have a membrane um, between them and their, their surrounding world. Uh, however, um, in, in almost no case um, is there such a thing as a pre-existing environment which shapes an organism which is sort of just a passive victim of, of that natural selector. Uh, in fact, organisms create their own environments. Um, you know, an example could be a bird, a particular species of bird um, that collects sticks and mud to make nests and eats a certain type of berry from a certain type of, of bush. Um, other features of what we would call the objective external world that don't concern this bird are not a part of its environment. Um, they don't affect the bird and the bird doesn't affect them. Um, the aspects of the environment that are a part of this bird's niche um, exhibit a kind of a feedback loop between the, the change and evolution of the organism, the bird, 
and the change and evolution of the environment. And both of these things are, are always pushing back and forth on one another. It's not as though the bird is just passively being selected by um, a pre-existing environment. Um, uh, Gould, on the other hand, likes to point out that um, evolution proceeds in a kind of happenstance, accidental, um, contingent sort of way, such that there may not be a reason for most of the features of a particular organism. And to try to construe, say, the, the fact that we have five fingers as some sort of an adaptation may be, may be misleading. Uh, we could just have easily uh, have had six fingers or four fingers. You know, obviously the opposable thumb um, is very easy to characterize as, as an adaptation in the sense that we can give um, we can we can tell a story about how it may have been useful um, and may have been selected for over time, um, and you know neither one of these these two uh, Luantin or Gould are trying to say that adaptationism is completely incorrect in in its assumptions. Just that we have to be careful not to assume that there is a reason for everything. Um, that would be Panglossian. Um, the word spandrel is uh, it's an architectural term that comes from the way cathedrals were constructed where um, when two domes kind of line up against one another there's this necessary structural feature that you don't really want to be there but it's just it's a side effect of other things that were selected for for architectural reasons um, and this is used as as an example um, or as a, as a term to use in, in the biological world to refer to a certain trait that really doesn't serve any use, uh, but just is there because other things were selected for, and it's just the leftover. Uh, um, these are called exaptations, also, uh, when they have evolved for no reason, but then, due to some change in the environment or situation, become useful to the organism. That's uh, an exaptation, or uh, what was formerly a spandrel, now becomes an adaptive feature of, of the organism's um, phenotype. Um, so, you know, some useful terms. I think I uh, I, I like uh, Luantin and, and Gould's uh, analysis here, but again, they're giving a caricature. I don't think any neo-Darwinians or serious evolutionary biologists um, would disagree that we can't take adaptationism too far. There is not a reason for everything. Um, and, uh, you know, Gould are, and, and Luantin are just trying to make sure that we don't take uh, this paradigm too literally. Um, because when we do that, we think that everything is, is everything about an organism um, is that way because it made it more fit. And that's not necessarily the case. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Um, let me know uh, what y'all think, and uh, let's discuss. Thanks for listening.